you guys. Today we're going to be doing a demonstration on ocean acidification. But before we start the demo, I want to give you a background on the pH scale and also the drivers of ocean acidification. So here on the left side of the board, we have the pH scale, which is what we use to determine how acidic or basic a solution or a liquid is. So the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Um, pH numbers that are really low tend to be more acidic. This means there's more free hydrogen ions in the solution. And then high pH numbers are basic. This means that there's less free hydrogen ions in the solution. A pH of 7 is neutral. The water we drink is usually about a pH of 7. Um, some other household things um, that can orient you with the scale. So lemon juice is really acidic. It has a pH um, of about 2. Uh, milk has a pH of about 6, and then moving to the basic side, ocean water has a pH of about 8.1, soap has a pH of 11, and then bleach has a pH of 12. Um, okay, so that's the pH scale, and now we'll move on to the drivers of ocean acidification. And to understand this, we need to start with human-induced climate change. So as the world um, industrializes, our industries are burning fossil fuels and emitting greenhouse gases. And the most common of which is carbon dioxide. You know this gas well because it's um, the gas that we exhale when we're breathing. So we're burning these fossil fuels, we're pr putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And two things happen. So the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere actually acts to heat up the air temperature, so it's warming global temperatures. But in addition to that, some of the carbon dioxide can actually dissolve into ocean water. So we're going to walk through the chemistry of when that carbon dioxide dissolves into ocean water and get a better understanding of ocean acidification. So this will get a little bit technical, but you don't have to understand all the details of this chemistry to understand the demo well. Okay, so carbon dioxide in the atmosphere dissolves into water, so you have CO2 plus H2O in the ocean. These combined give you um, carbonic acid, H2CO3. This then breaks apart into a free hydrogen ion as well as a bicarbonate ion. And remember from the pH scale that we learned that free hydrogen ions make a solution more acidic. So we know already that this is acidifying the ocean waters at this point in the chemical reaction. But then another thing happens. So this same free hydrogen ion likes to bond with something called a carbonate ion. Carbonate ions are important because they're building blocks for shells in the ocean. So if this free hydrogen ion is snagging away these carbonate ions from shellfish that need it, um, it's actually weakening or dissolving um, shells in the ocean. So we can see that here in this little picture. On the left, um, is ocean water without additional carbon dioxide. And you have a really healthy, complete shell here. And then on the right, we have ocean water that's been acidified with the addition of carbon dioxide or CO2. And you can see that this shell is really holy. It's weak, it's dissolved. Um, and this is one of the impacts that ocean acidification can, can have in the marine environment. So now we'll go ahead and step into the ocean acidification demonstration. All right, so now that we've learned a little bit of background on ocean acidification and the pH scale, we're gonna do a demonstration to actually show the concepts of ocean acidification happening before our eyes. And we can do this with a few simple materials. So what we need is some container with water in it, preferably the container is clear, so you can see the color of the water inside. You need some sort of um, hollow straw-like material, so you can use like a bamboo shoot, or I think this came from some sort of palm plant, or a papaya stem, or papaya leaf, um, or some type of straw. Um, then you need pH indicators. So this is a pH indicator that's used for household aquariums. You can buy this at pet stores. Um, and it's just a solution you need a few drops of, and it comes with um, a little color scale here. Um, and how you use the color scale, um, the yellow here is more acidic, it has a lower pH. Um, in this case it's 6, and then at the other end you have the blue colors which are um, more basic. This is 7.6 um, on the other end here. 
And if you can't find pH indicator like this locally, you can make some of your own um, using purple cabbage actually, which is the natural pH indicator. So you can check out um, the link below, which will show you how to make your own homemade pH, pH indicator if you'd like. Okay, so to start, <clears throat> we're gonna take the pH indicator and add a few droplets to the water that we have. And we can kind of mix it around. And you see that we have a nice blue color here. So Zach, you can use the um, color scale from the pH indicator box and give us a sense of what pH you think we are starting with So that's pretty close to 7.6. Okay. So we have um, water that's more on the basic end of the, of the pH scale right now. Okay. So obviously, if we're going to demonstrate ocean acidification, we need carbon dioxide. Um, and what do we exhale, Zach? CO2 or carbon dioxide. Yeah, so luckily we can um, just add CO2 by breathing through um, this straw and blowing bubbles into the water. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to hold up the pH scale, the color scale here, while Zach blows bubbles. So just keep blowing bubbles um, for as long as you can. So slowly but surely here, we can kind of see it turning maybe into a green color, depending on how strong Zach's lungs are. We may even see it go a little bit lighter. CO2 we add, you can see that the pH is getting lower or the water is actually getting more acidic. So it hasn't taken um, that long for it to actually just blow bubbles and turn this um, into a pretty yellow solution. So what would you say the pH is now based on the color scale? I'm going to catch my breath for a second. It's maybe, what do you think, 6.4? Yeah, somewhere between 6 and 6.4. So remember um, the pH scale is logarithmic, so that change from 7.6 to 6.4 means that there's actually a really large change in the acidity of the water. Um, so how happy do you think a shellfish would be living in, in these newly acidified waters? It might be happy until its shell can't grow anymore or until it decays. Yeah. So um, shellfish and fish um, can definitely be negatively affected by waters that acidify like this. Um, and if you want to take this demonstration one step further, you can explore this concept um, by taking a solution of vinegar, which is naturally acidic, and then adding some shells or even an egg that you have locally. So shells and eggs are both made um, with um, calcium compounds. And so you can add that into the vinegar and let it sit for a few weeks and just observe what happens to it over time. And you'll, you maybe will see that the shell or the egg will weaken or dissolve completely after sitting um, in that acidic solution for so long. So it just gives us a sense of the negative impacts that um, anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions and the resulting ocean acidification can have on marine animals. Thanks for watching.